Hi, I'm Scott Morris. Uh, this lesson is based on my book, Classical Guitar Complete, Volume 2. Um, the little piece I just played is uh, just one of the little, you know, sonatas by Paganini. Uh, it is in my book as well. Um, but I'm going to be focusing on Chapter 3. Uh, it's called Phrasing and Musicality, and I, I thought this would be a nice piece to play just to demonstrate some, you know, really basic uh, things that you can do to maybe bring out the music in your playing. Just find some ways to, to be more musical. Um, a couple things I wanted to uh, focus on here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about counting, a little bit about uh, phrasing in terms of, you know, counting bar lines, you know, measures, uh, that sort of thing. Um, a little bit about dynamics and also just, you know, where to push and pull back um, in the music. So, you know, rubato, you know, ritardando, things like that. So I hope you find it uh, useful. Um, let's start first just with, uh, you know, the pickup notes. Um, just just uh, in case you don't have the score in front of you yet, um, this is on page 19, and it's in 6-8 time. You have two eighth notes to start, and that's it for the measure. So you have these two, you know, pickup notes. One of the things that you know, I'm often hearing, uh, especially students do, uh, is the pickups don't sound like pickups. So, you know, that's not beat one, it starts like this. So it's actually five, six, one. So you get that one, da, 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 da. Um, you know, I, I suppose you should also know a compound time signature like six, eight. You're not really counting it one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. It's kind of like, you know, a slower two, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's important to emphasize as well. So understanding is not one, two, three, four, five, six, straight through like that. But these two eighth notes, the way I like to do it is I hear a full measure in my head and then I put the pickups on the end of that measure. So instead of just, you know, starting and then trying to find, you know, where I am in, in the measure or, or the beat, I actually hear one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three. So, you know, I'll do that again just to kind of emphasize this once more. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, you know, I'm already hearing the beat before I start to play. I think a lot of people, they start to play and then they look for where, you know, the, the count is and that, that's not a good strategy. So you need to know right off the top. Um, another thing, you know, we want to talk about here is the idea of, you know, phrasing and, and the structure of the phrase. Well, the, this piece is in, you know, what's called binary form. So you've got an A section and that's repeated and then you've got a B section um, and that's repeated. So it's like A, A, B, B. Well, this A section is basically eight bars, and it's in the really traditional, classical four bars, question, four bars, answer. Um, sometimes called period form. Um, if you check chapter three in my book, there's a whole bunch about uh, you know, period form, uh, question, answer, what's often called antecedent, consequent. Um, as well as, you know, the different types of cadences, half cadences and, you know, you know, full cadences and authentic cadences and plagal cadences. You know, I'm not going to get into all of that now, but I am just going to, you know, show you this basic uh, period form. So uh, I'll slow it down here and, uh, and I'll stop at the various sort of, you know, you know points in the phrase here. And uh, you'll see what I mean by this question and answer. So we start. there that's sort of like the end of the first there's some tiny little kind of you know mini phrases in there but that that's the first you know real part of it there so you have this and then you have okay so the question is the question part of it is okay um, it's a little bit like a sentence and that might be a comma at the end of that. So there's, there's definitely a pause, but it doesn't sound like an ending yet. So... Oops. So there, that sounds more like an ending. Now, if you know your, your theory, or you know, even if you're not you know, a, you know, a real theory uh, 
you know, buff. Uh, maybe you've taken some fundamentals, something like that. Um, in that case, there, there are some other things you can do, such as knowing what key you're in. You know, this is an A minor. Uh, you know, this first half phrase ends on E. So, you know, if you know your theory, then you'll know that that's the dominant of A minor. You know, so five, that's that half cadence I was talking about. And then the end of the second part of this uh, phrase ends on A. So that's home base if, if you're in A minor. So, you know, end on five, there's your half cadence, end on uh, A, that's, that, that's home base. So the first phrase, again, So there you have home base. Um, now, what can you do once you know that to make it sound uh, musical? Well, you need to take a little bit of time. You know, what I do at the end of you know, the first half of that phrase, at that half cadence, is I take some time, and then I take a breath. And you know, one, one thing that you know, was taught to me when I was a student was to actually take a breath. Um, actually taking a breath really helps in the musicality. Also, it, you know, kind of relaxes you. So, you know, if you're, if you're playing and, you know, had far too much coffee like I did, uh, then, you know, this is like a little moment of repose. You can... So, you know, I think a lot of guitar players, um, everything is just in the fingers, you know, whereas singers, wind players, um, you know, it's much more sort of connected to, 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 to them. Um, you know, when, when they breathe in the music, they literally breathe in the music. It means, you know, take air. Um, a lot of times we just, you know, think it means, you know, be quiet for a second or, you know, some people get nervous and actually hold their breath. It's exactly the opposite of what you want to do. So, uh, take a little bit of time and then take a breath. of the, the, the full phrase, and I take a little bit um, more time, and then there's your, 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 your resolution. Um, now, the second half of this, it's, it's a little bit more complicated than just like a straight four and four. It's kind of like two, two, and four. Um, but, you know, I just want to jump right to the end here so you can, uh, you know, hear what I'm doing at the, at the very end where you want to take a lot of time, I think, uh, so it sounds like a real ending. So that's the end of the piece. Now, one of the things I teach my students to do, and uh, you know, something that, that I do myself when I perform, is I think it's really important to look musical at the end. I know this sounds, sounds a little strange, but um, don't move um, when you've finished the, the final notes. Uh, you know, to me, it's, it's much more effective if you kind of hold it there for a second. So let me, let me show you what I mean. Um, here's the, uh, the last three measures or so. See, you just kind of hold it a little bit. It always sounds insincere when somebody does, you know. Right, and they, you know, they, it's like they just read a poem to you or something like that. And, you know, but, you know. They end and then they look at you and start laughing or something. It, I don't know, it just seems to take the sincerity away from it. Uh, so, uh, phrasing, phrasing is huge. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I, I think, you know, breathing as part of, uh, of that phrasing, to actually breathe, you know, connect yourself to the music um, will help it become uh, more musical. A um, couple of other things I just, you know, want to talk about. I already talked a little bit about, you know, ritardando and, and you know, taking a little bit of, you know, time here or there. Uh, but there's some other spots where you might actually want to push the music a bit. Um, you know, you know, for instance, the... Before that little theme comes back there at the end, you know, I like to kind of push the tempo there um, and then give back. You know, that's what we call rubato. And, you know, rubato is a tricky thing to explain, you know, it, it means borrowed time. Um, if, if you push the tempo, if you speed up, if you do a little accelerando, um, then you need to slow down in order to kind of like get back on track. In other words, if you just speed up and keep speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, then you're just rushing. 
but if you speed up a little bit and then you slow it down, then the music has this you know sort of elastic flexibility that that can be really really nice. Um, you know, it's hard to to kind of verbalize rubato, um, and you know, read books about rubato, these sorts of things. Uh, actually, what I suggest is just listen to a lot of really musical players. You know, listen to Scott Tennant, listen to David Russell, listen to you know wonderful musical players. And uh, that's a much better way. It's like a jazz musician, you know, trying to learn how to swing by reading in a book, you know, how to swing. That's, that's no way to learn how to swing. You need to listen to uh, players who know how to do it. And uh, that way you can kind of internalize it. Um, the last thing I want to talk about here is dynamics and how to shape the line. Um, and, you know, this I've already mentioned singers is very much connected to, you know, how singers do it. So I'll just play the melody. got this. One of the things a singer will do just naturally is as the notes get higher, they'll get a little bit louder. So the, there's a slight crescendo um, as you get higher. Just, you know, one of the things that uh, happens naturally when you sing. Actually, if you tell a singer to, you know, sing really high and, and quietly, that's, that's really challenging for them. If you just let them do what they do naturally, they're, they're going to, you know, most cases uh, get louder. I found that one of the best ways to phrase on the guitar uh, with dynamics is as you move up, as the notes get higher, you get a little bit louder. As the notes go down, you back off. Um, and it's, it's almost as simple as that. There's some other spots where you hear maybe some, uh, you know, a little bit of dissonance there when you're at that half cadence and there you want to push it a little bit as well but in general if you follow the line you know when it goes up get a little bit louder when it goes down get a little bit quieter and then just listen for tension and resolution in the music and you know with tension I like to push it a little bit louder resolution back off um, then you know I think you'll you'll find that your pieces become more musical and you know, remember this guitar thing that we're doing. It's not an athletic event. It's not about you know just getting all the notes right and you know being faster than the next guy. Um, that that's most of it. But uh, you also want to be really musical, um, and uh, your audience will enjoy your performances much more um, if you actually play your music in a musical way. So I hope you got something out of this, and hope to see you again soon.